What up my freaks, Ruinous and Sight here, welcoming you to part 1 of a brand new Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires campaign. The Champions of Chaos DLC is nearly upon us, and the community poll has decided that the first of the DLC lords that I'll play will be Village the Cursling. Considering you guys also separately voted for Kairos for Immortal Empires, apparently there's a lot of love for Zinch around here. But these are not the Oracles, they're flavored Warriors of Chaos. They're gonna play completely differently, especially with the new updates to the faction. Plus, we're starting on the opposite end of the map from Immortal Empire's Kairos, so I do expect a completely different campaign in general. Anyway, before we jump in and check out all the fancy new toys, a few quick things to mention. If you enjoy this content and you want to see it updated regularly, don't forget to drop your likes and comments for the algorithm down below. As always, a huge shout out to you guys for all your comments and support. YouTube's my hobby and your comments keep it fun, keep the channel alive, and keep these videos coming. That's it, that's all. I'm going to take a quick look at this brand new faction's details, as I have not spoiled myself and I will learn as I go, but do feel free to skip to gameplay via the timestamps below. Anyway, our starting army is going to be composed of Chaos Warriors of Zinch, Doom Knights, Spawn, and Forsaken. The Doom Knights, I guess, are the super elite units that we have, but nothing crazy like a Lord of Change or a Soul Grinder or any of the higher tier Chaos units either, so we will see about that. Uh, we will gain increased barrier hit points and spread Zinch Corruption vast for vassals. Uh, we have access to the changing of the ways. Oh, interesting. I do wonder if they're identical to those of Kairos or do have different effects. Uh, forces receive benefits from high, having high winds of magic, I'll bet. Uh, converts a portion of own battle casualties into souls. Oh, that's interesting. So actually taking damage to armies isn't necessarily a bad thing as we do get whatever the soul currency is back. And we have access to the Zinch teleport stance, which could be very useful in some situations, especially especially where uh, the Great Bastion is concerned, where we apparently are starting north of. Alrighty, as for the Lord effects, steal 15% of the XP earned by other Lords. Is that our Lords or enemy Lords? Or everybody's Lords? I'm not entirely sure. Uh, passive ability, the Twisted Twin. Uh, so we gain Spell Mastery, Melee Attack, and Melee Defense, uh, depending on time spent in Melee or casting spells. So Big Bro Melee and Little Bro casting spells. Fair enough. And then that'll obviously make spell work more dangerous from uh, the Twins as well. And then lastly, Teleport Stance usage is reduced in terms of its cost. Sounds pretty good to me. We're going to go with very hard, very hard in terms of difficulty. And lastly, you know what? I'm going to give a quick read to the lore for Village the Cursling, but uh, once again, and do use the chapters if you want to skip this part. I just happen to be a sucker for uh, Warhammer lore, and it would be a shame not to give it a read. So, Village the Cursling. From the time of his birth, the weakling village was universally despised for his ugliness and frailty, while his twin, Tommen, became an athletic warrior. After praying fervently to Zinch to reverse their fates, the runt awoke to find that his body and that of his sibling had melded together, with Tommen reduced to a drooling automaton, enthralled to village's command. With his magical abilities enhanced a hundredfold and a hulking body, the twisted twin wreaked his vengeance upon those who had looked down upon him, while enslaving the minds of his tribe's warriors so that they would live and die according to his whims. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. And, well, we'll check out how the Warriors of Chaos play when we actually get into the game, so all glory to the algorithm, and let's get to it. We will show them, brother! We will show them all! This is my destiny! All right, little fella, relax, relax. Uh, everything will be okay. Now, let's see what we've got here. Mr. Village the Cursling on the field. Uh, 55, 55 melee attack and defense. Looks like your base stats are pretty darn decent. And what do we have in our army? We got spawn, we got a basic Doom Knight unit to start with. Well, basic. I mean, we have a, a Doom Knight unit to start off with right away. A couple of Chaos Warriors of Zinch and Marauders of Zinch, as well as some regular Marauders and Forsaken. Chaos. 
Celestial Chaos Sorcerer of Metal. Oh, yes. Yes, Searing Doom. And what do you have here? Undivided Authority plus one own army. I don't know exactly what that means, but we'll learn about it shortly. Well, you're probably going to join this army immediately. And there we go. Now, there's probably a bunch of stuff we want to learn about, but I think we'll do that after the first battle. Let's just jump into it, uh, take this stuff over. I suppose the question is whether we want... Oh, hello. Dark Fortress site. Oh, so we can actually capture this. Dark Fortress can be built here, or... The settlement will provide you with this Norskin vassal. Wait, do we get the settlement or does our vassal get the settlement? I guess we're about to find out. Alright, village, time to attack. We'll learn about how exactly the faction works after uh, after getting in on the action a little bit and seeing some blood, shall we? All right, our wholesome little duo of brothers going in for their first battle, uh, their debut, and looking pretty fly ahead of these uh, Raven God warriors, aren't they? Glorious. Ah, uh, you gotta, you gotta love the aesthetics of Saint. Been lots of comments about that, and uh, I definitely have to agree there. All right, and the enemy army is going to be destroyed with extreme ease because it's a first battle but uh, while well, that shouldn't be surprising it's here. designed to be that way uh, they have a single unit of archers which we should be able to take care of our with our doom knights who are going to go from the uh, from the back or from the side and we also sent out another unit of marauders from the side as well but otherwise it doesn't really matter what you do in this first battle because you can just head straight towards the enemy and that's what we're gonna do see some uh, see some animations from village see some nice blood effects uh, go into effect. I'm just gonna wait a few seconds for our marauders to move into form or per, into position rather and same thing goes for our doom knights and there we go now the village can head out by himself and the reason I want to send him forward is he's pretty tanky with 80 armor and his barrier as well or their barrier just like Kairos I never know when to uh, whether to refer to them as two units or one unit uh, but uh, yeah I feel like if the archers go for him it would be a little bit better Gonna start off with some blue fires of Zinch into the enemy lord. Not that I think it would do too much damage, especially as we don't have a high vantage point to use that particular spells against, especially against smaller targets. Otherwise, here come the Forsaken as well as the spawn. Looking very appropriate together. And there we go, start ripping units apart. I am going to enjoy the heck out of this. Alrighty, where's Village? Let's see some of those animations. I don't even know where to look. Unfortunately, this battle will probably be too short to have a good showing of everybody, uh, but uh, rest assured we'll have more than one fight that's cinematic in this first episode. Alright, Village just trying to get through this particular formation. I think he was trying to go and hit the enemy Lord, who is currently being... Uh, well, I was about to say surrounded by those Doom Knights, but only for a second there. Alright, Searing Doom coming down and allowing Village to move in. Oh, one of the Doom Knights died. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. Alright, nice little duel for us here while the enemy army dies in the background. I like how Big Bro kneels, allowing for Little Bro to cast stuff. And I do believe the battle should be just about done. The enemy lord is at about half HP. Village completely unharmed thus far, and only the barrier having gone down. Doom Knight's moving back in to try to secure the victory. Our, their melee lines collapse, but honestly, it took a little bit longer than I thought it would. 
considering it's a first battle. There we go. I've got my fill of the village animations in the first few seconds, uh, then we will actually have a proper look in the following battle, or in the battle after that, depending on how difficult uh, the uh, next battle is. Uh, but otherwise, we gotta learn about the faction a little bit. And just to, uh, you know, just to get a taste here. Alrighty, there we go. I just really needed to see the new units uh, in action. Now, let's see. Oh, we could heal completely to full. Our uh, basic marauders got a little bit damaged, which I suppose is unsurprising. They don't have barriers, unlike the Zinchin units. And then we got that new currency of souls, plus a tiny bit of cash. I guess, do we actually want to bother healing up here? Is this enough souls? I have no point of reference uh, as to how much this actually is. Hmm. Also, Eye of the Gods, the higher the number of active gifts of chaos you have, the more of the Eye of the Gods is drawn to your faction. Once the meter is full, a dilemma will offer you powerful rewards. Oh, I like the sound of that. Uh, you know what? Let's try to sacrifice the captives and... I mean, it sounds like the units are hurt enough for us to care about. Nah, sacrifice those captives, I'm sure they'll heal up afterwards. Ooh, I like that post-battle effect. Well done. Alrighty, now. Uh, changing of the ways in Gifts of Chaos, you must control a settlement in order to claim Gifts of Chaos. Well, that can be arranged. There's one right there. Uh, changing of the ways is going to be very similar to the main Zinchin faction. I see we have uh, Metal Mines reduce the enemy movement range, ambush defense, and leadership of a target army. Oh, 250 souls. Oh, I see. All of these are 250 souls. Not bad, actually. So that was a decent amount. Drain up to 40 winds of magic from a targeted army, eh? Hmm. Add three chaos spawn to any army. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, that's really nice. Add up to three chaos. Is so permanently? So basically, we could do this at any time. Huh. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure that we want to right now. They cost 235. It would essentially bankrupt us. Uh, but as soon as Village has this, uh, the minus 50% up you for Spawn and Forsaken, bam, we pop that, and suddenly it's really good. As for what we get, Root Moucher is super valuable early on, but I think we go straight into maxing out Pink Fire Zinch as well as the. Uh, uh, as well as the Searing Doom spell. Those are so spammable and so valuable uh, that uh, it's definitely the way to go. Uh, also, how do you upgrade units? An eligible unit that must be selected. Okay, so let's say we select K Marauders of Zinch. Ah, uh, they must be rank 5 or rank 3 for Forsaken. Fairly low. Now... Huh. Are you able to upgrade... Oh, you can upgrade regular Marauders into Zinchin Marauders straight up, or even Zinchin Spears, if you should so desire. I'm not sure I see any sense in bothering with regular Marauders, and the cost is... not really relevant, and the difference is 100 to get magical attacks as well as... Barrier. And so it just seems better for... Very, very paltry investment. Let's just get more Marauders of Zinch then. Start leveling them up. Huh, I do wonder, when you do this, do their... Huh. Do their levels XP disappear? Yes, they do. They do disappear, so it's better to do this early on rather than wait. Okie dokie. Uh, also... When, oh, hello. We can get Chaos Warhounds. Oh, I wonder... Hmm, you know what? Chaos Warhounds would be pretty valuable early on. Let's get these as well. I'm not actually sure that we need these to attack here, but uh, we should probably start building up our army. This is a Warband Recruitment. Huh. Kind of functions similar to Ray's Dead, I guess, now. Interesting. And then I guess we'll make you another Marauder of Zinch. I mean, we've, we've got to make this army maximally Zinchified, especially if we uh, have a massive reduction on Forsaken. We might as well. And then evolve them. I take it that the doggos can't be evolved. Uh, they're not even here, so doggos are as they are, alas. Okie dokie. Uh, we also have text to choose from, so Mystical Banner is the only way to go. Zinchin Authority plus one for each active gift. I want to take a quick look at what exactly this does. Zinchin Authority, three out of ten. Casualty or punishment rate for Zinch units, upkeep for Zinch units, recruitment and more band upgrade costs. Okay, so basically, 
upgrade this, keep high levels of Zinchen units, and then reduce the upkeep. You know, makes sense to me. Alright, well, let's head into the settlement. I don't imagine this will be too difficult. It says Pyrrhic victory, um, but uh, yeah. You know what, I think we'll fight this regular style. We fought the first battle cinematically, I think this will be just as trivial, especially as it doesn't have a lord. I'm sure we will find other cinematic battles in whatever the heck is here. Plus I'm excited to see what the... Uh, uh, what the... Vassal system is going to work with. Or, or I suppose look like here. I'm really glad about this Dark Bastion thing, if we can hold it. I remember when, uh, when Vanilla and the Warriors of Chaos were Horde only, and then an, and then SFO added the... I don't remember if they called them Dark Bastions, but similar sort of things. Oh, on the bright side, we can send the uh, Doom Knights up the walls to kill all the peasant archers up there. And these are just peasant archers, not Jade Warrior crossbowmen, so we don't actually have to worry about them dishing out too much damage. I also have my doubts about the enemy's ability to actually do anything to our uh, Chaos Warriors. Speaking of Chaos Warriors, you guys are going to move up front. Uh, doggos, you can stay back until we're through the gate. I don't want the towers killing you. The village, you can run up ahead. I doubt you're going to get too damaged. Alright, in fact, Marauders, let's keep the healthy Marauders like this. They have no lord, no caster, we have no worries for the rest of our days. Good. Alright, let's say group one, everybody else group two, three, spawn, you should be in here. Party group two. There we go. Start battle. Move up. Doom Knights, Doom Knights, Doom Knights. Ah. Alrighty, and move forward and then get ready to head down towards those peasant archers. All right, you've almost lost your barrier, but you should be through now, and then jump on them. Ooh, in fact, wait, jump on the second unit, so that you can hopefully distract both of them. While the rest of us, all right, village go, everybody head towards that gate. We can blob up, it doesn't matter. Okay, maybe not, it does matter. <laughs> all righty, units that are liable to actually break through the gate go here, you guys in front. Okay, good. The trees are really in their way, aren't they? Yep. <laughs> Uh, well, I suppose it is a Chaos Army, not going to be the most disciplined of armies, and ooh, our units have jumped off the walls. We should be careful with them there. And though we do have the ability to support them with magics should the need arise. I gotta be careful with the Doom Knights, they're a pretty fragile unit after all. Oh, we can have them go after the tower if they manage to lift up. Not like the archers are doing anything. And look at the spawn, what the heck are you doing, spawn? <laughs> Uh, all right, head into that, and then let's have both of the warriors of Tsinge head into the gate as well. And Village himself. All right, you guys have lifted off, yes? Yes. Good, go after that tower, and you can come back for the archers afterwards. Oh, actually, there are two of you still on the ground. Come on. Come on. Damn hoverboards. All right, there we go. Or hover discs, I guess. And because uh, this gate should be easy to break through, shouldn't be too worried. There we go. Let's start casting. Really got to get this uh, spell maxed out. That uh, pink fire is very, very nice. Uh, enemies do a pretty good job of moving away from this, but let's just see. Yeah. Takes a little bit long. We need to wait for them to blob up. Still got a few kits in there, though. Alright, how's that gate? Nearly dead. And do knights. Have you keep attacking the tower, your barrier's still up. Village, you will be through shortly. So let's take you, you, and you, and you, and you. And then charge on in. Let's open up the battle with a nice pink fire of Zinch right through the enemy. Uh, there we go, and here come the Forsaken. How is those Doom Knights looking? Let's also cast the uh, Arcane Surge on our Lord here. And there we go. Now the enemy's engaged. Where's the tinch? Good. Alrighty, everybody else follow those units in. Let's have the higher uh, HP units move in. You guys follow along. Forsaken, you can move in as well. Uh, looks like the tower is down and we have some archers to kill. Go. Get the doggos in here as well. Alright, lovely. Uh, do we want another pink fire? You can never have too much fire. There we go. At least it staggers the unit, which can be quite nice. Oh, we do have to be careful with the spawn, though, otherwise they might uh, get damaged. 
And I believe that's about it for our spells. Unfortunately, it shouldn't matter that much. Let's just move the Forsaken and the other Marauders in, and then we'll back the uh, we'll back the spawn back into the battle. Ah, good. Village can hit them in the back now. All right, trying to get in there. Wink. All right, it looks like the enemy wants to stop us killing those peasant archers with some jade warrior as well. Let's charge them in here. Village, you get another cast ability. We also got a Searing Doom right on this blob. And everybody attack. Forsaken, you can join back in now. Not going to be as damaged anymore. Arab Warriors have cast on. Pretty good. Ooh. That effect looks really nice now, huh? I gotta love the updated graphics to the... Uh, to units, to various things, really. Alright, Doom Knights, Doom Knights, get out. I know you're fragile, be careful. Gotta charge those units in the back here. And if we can cast one more Searing Doom or one more Pink Fire of Zinch, I think this battle will be over. Trivial, once again, but we'll find a better one. Eh, we can also watch some stuff here. Ah, yes. A glorious blood. Oh, wow. I wonder if... Uh, <laughs> I keep wanting to call uh, Zinch and Lord Zinch, which isn't really correct. It's a little bit more correct with Nurgle, though. Ooh, very nice. Ah, uh, Kairos has a similar effect where he just, like, you know, spells the ground and the, uh, and the area of effect happens. I want to see if the little guy, like, picks up a unit or bonks him on the head or something. Now throw some spells around. Okay, you know what? We should double check our units in case they're getting damaged. I, uh, uh, while the blood is new, I'm definitely gonna get distracted by it a lot. Ah, look at the circle opening up around village. Nobody wants to face them in battle. Alright, and the battle should be just about done. There looks like one or two units left alive. Let's charge some marauders in there and attack you. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that the battle has not yet ended, to be perfectly honest. There's still another full HP unit of uh, archers here. You know what? Let's send the Doom Knights out to deal with them. Maybe not through this other unit. And there we go. Alright, these guys are now routing. Yeah, if we can hit those archers, the uh, the entire enemy army will rout most likely. Can't use spells against you, unfortunately. What we can do, however, is let's say pick a unit like the Forsaken and send them around. And village, you can go around as well. And balance of power is shot. Ah, these guys are coming back because a couple of them are engaged in the battle. So, yeah, gotta get really, really gotta get used to that. All right, village, round you go, baby. And battle should be over. Okay, hit them in the side, cause that morale shock. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, Doom Knights. I know a couple of you want to stay in the fight. Maybe we just kill this unit outright. Okay, village, hit them in the back as well. Cause that morale shock. Do you cause any fear or terror, incidentally? No, really? Huh, interesting. Uh, Spellmaster gets- okay, there it goes. <laughs> and just as Village comes into the fight, so maybe in some ways he does cause some fear and terror. Alrighty, as I said, a trivial battle. Let's find a proper one, shall we? Ooh, look at those kills. 151-100 on our Chaos Warriors. Comparatively fewer on our Marauders, though to be fair, these guys were first into the fray. We got more damage on our Chaos Sorcerer, but Searing Doom is just incredibly useful. Pink Fire is good when it's upgraded, but a lot less so when it doesn't have the overcast ability, so that's not surprising. Spawn did okay. Uh, Doom Knights did okay. Yeah. And I didn't end up using the doggos, because honestly, I kind of forgot I had them. Uh, another 131 souls. And now this, sh it said it would unlock stuff. Ooh, alright, so let's, let's see what this does. Uh, souls is our currency, which we know. Occupy and vassalize. So what will this do? Okay, yeah, so this is, it is our province. Oh, and we just get, huh. Oh, that's really interesting. We get a uh, territory ourselves, and we created a vassal at the same time. Hmm. What's the vassal tribute here? Plus eight? Okay. <laughs> and they refuse to trade. Uh, okay, buddy. Ooh. Quick deal. Gazag. Hmm. 
All right, well, we'll, we'll check that out later. Okie dokie, so... New gifts unlocked. Let's see what we're looking at here. Bunch of locks. Okay, there are two empty spots. Why are there two? Oh, okay, so an undivided gift and a gift of uh, Chaos of Zinch. So, undivided gift. We have Furies added to the gifted units pool every three turns after... Gifted units pool. Gifted units. Hey, a pink horror unit. Uh... Yes, I want a pink horror unit. Wait. We would probably be better off taking that next turn because it would cost us unnecessary income right now. Uh, so this is the gifted units pool. And essentially just a bunch of elite demon stuff and ooh, hell cannons. Yes, please. Oh. To get the hell cannons, I assume we need undivided gifts. They're probably an undivided unit. Uh, I see dragon ogres, I see war shrines, I see hell cannons. Okay, so yeah, we'll definitely want this. Ah, hell cannons, finally. Hey, we get the portal glyph ability for using those. Nice. Oh, and these have soul upkeep, but it seems like we get a ton of souls, so the upkeep uh, does seem a little bit trivial. Uh, we have casualty or punishment and attack for marauders, which seems quite good. 15% missile resistance. You know what? Against Cathay, that does seem quite valuable. Uh, defensive supplies plus 1,000 could be very useful when defending, and army ability shatter stone during siege battles. Oh, wow, this is like the ogre ability where you just break through a wall. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, we're doing, we're doing that. I'm sure the marauder thing is useful. Uh, it's... You know, experience gain plus 25% for marauders. Oh, interesting. Oh, so it upgrades a technology that we research, which we don't have access to currently. Oh, wait. Now, here's a question. Do we need to unlock technologies to unlock specific unit types as well? I assume that we do, because I didn't see any buildings in the warband or the upgrade thing. Hm, we'll see in a second. Now, what do we have here? Horror of the Skies. Huh, we could get some more Screamers to round out our roster a little bit. Although, what else do we have here? Ooh, Pink Horrors. Cooldown minus 25% for all spells, barrier hit points. Okay, so it's these three at first. What do we need for this? Soul Scented Zinch. Sacrificing Souls to Lord of Change unlocks additional gifts. You know, I would love to get a couple Screamers and put them on walls, but I would also love to get a couple Pink Horrors. You know what? Let's get a, get a couple Pink Horrors first. We'll get like three or four in our army, and then we'll switch to the Screamers after that. Yeah, I like that. I like that idea. Add to slot first. I want the Pink Horrors first. Alrighty, and that cost us a thousand souls, and now we have minus 100. I maybe should have done that after we moved closer to more enemies, as now we need to really book it in order to do stuff. But anyway, what do we have here? Okay, so basically we can only build a military building, which will allow us to build Marauders of Zinch, but honestly, I don't see why we'd need to when we could just get regular Marauders and turn them into Marauders of Zinch, so I'm not seeing much value in it. And ah, we already have two out of three pink cores, or maybe we'll just put straight up four in here. I'll see. Okay, well, regardless, we need to build infrastructure, so infrastructure we shall build. Oh, wow, 400 money per turn, straight up, sweet. And growth and casualty replenishment. Now, growth would be useful, but the cost is really quite high for growth building. I imagine all the buildings in for Warriors of Chaos are going to be quite expensive. Yeah. We probably will also want a um, another Chaos Sorcerer on the field as early as possible. Oh, speaking of Chaos Sorcerer, I wanted to check this Path of Glory thing out. So, Boons of Chaos can be unlocked by completing various challenges. Once a challenge is completed, a boon becomes active immediately. Bound spell, the Penumbral Pendulum, end your turn with over 80 wins of magic. Cooldown for spells, wounds of magic cost for spells. Oh, nice. And then hit points and armor. Oh, some nice upgrades. And then Marks of Chaos. Grant this character a Mark of Chaos to ascend them into a new, hopefully, Zinchian... Oh, okay, they're both Zinchian forms. Transformed characters will be half their rank, and their previous form and all skills will be reset to cho be chosen again. Cost will decrease the higher the character's level. Oh, so you want to do this as early as possible on the one hand. On the other hand, that's 2,000 soul cost. Interesting. Well, either way, we want to get Pink Fire of Zinch upgraded. Or do we want to get Root Marcher right now? 
Uh, because who knows how far the next enemy territory is. You know what, let's start with Root Mantra and then we'll go straight into Pink Fire of Zane Chapter. And then you are just going straight into Searing Doom. Nothing else here matters. Searing Doom, as we just saw, is just too damn good. Alrighty, and yeah, it looks like we have a long way to go before reaching the next enemy settlement. Uh, do we want to recruit anything here right now? No, we don't. Let's end the turn. We'll get those pink horrors on the field as well. And then we'll proceed. Also, I just want to see, can we actually go south from here? Like, could we sail through here? I don't see why we'd want to. I suppose we could bypass the Great Bastion that way. Alrighty. Uh, no, we can't actually go to the water, huh? Okay, so these cliffs actually prevent us, so we only have one way to go, so we can't bypass the Great Bastion. And oh, what's that? Is that Fellheart? Ah, it is Fellheart. He'll probably ally with us later on. Presuming we don't, you know, kill him. Uh, yeah, this looks to be pretty far. Okay, so this is what I think we want to do. First of all, we check this. Looks like nothing here. Let's get our two pink horrors, though the money is quite a lot. There we go. Then, since nothing, since there's nothing else we can do in here, we're going to go into March Stance. And we're just going to go as far as we can. And then hit the Dragon's Crossroad. Oh, actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, picking up that... Uh, huh, there's a gate here. Huh, do we want to attack Dragon's Crossroad or do we want to take a gate? Hmm, okay, here's a question. Commandments. If Zinch has some good commandments, or if this particular faction has some good commandments, we would get a commandment at each gate, right? Unless I'm mistaken. From what I remember from the High Elven Gates and the Fortresses, they do... They are able to use commandments. And if there's a Zinchin, for example, uh, corruption commandment, we could essentially corrupt everything south of the gates just by having the gates exist. Now oh, there's another Dark Fortress here. And we're not at war with these guys. Might have to attack them. Hm. We'll see. But yeah, what I was saying was, is the fact that we got that Gift of Chaos that allows us to break through walls could be pretty useful in attacking these uh, Bastion areas. Though I imagine that like fortresses and like High Elven Gates, they don't make any money. Alright, let's see if we can reach them and I'll reach this in one turn. Would be nice to just take an early gate, why not? I assume this is what you're supposed to do, but I have no idea. Uh, it is a sandbox after all, so there is no wrong choice. And yes, we can reach Turtle Gate. That sounds like a cinematic battle to me. Valiant Defeat. Well, it is a gate. It has towers, uh, but it is... Wait, is it a level 2 gate, I take it? Level 1 gate. And there's some forces outside it. Huh. Oh, they're fighting... the. Oh, wait, never mind. Wait, aren't the Celestial Lions... No, they're trading with the Northern Provinces. For some reason, I thought that they were at war with them. In one of my other factions, I definitely saw them fight. Ally missions. Caravan and presumably army. It's unlikely that we're going to defeat a caravan. So let's do that. And then let's get a cinematic battle going now that we have one of these Gifts of Chaos. Uh, the enemy couldn't really quite stand against us uh, in the other two battles. So I don't imagine that they'll be able to hear even with the gate. Go. Alrighty, that's a nice looking bastion. Shame if somebody used the spell to instantly destroy the gate and allow this uh, Chaos Warband to stream right in. Alrighty, lovely, absolutely lovely. Also, our Doom Knight's coming down instantly on top of the walls, bringing the uh, archers that were up here uh, down to about half HP. Although they really quickly do try to drop down onto the ground, so we do gotta get away from here or else they'll go down and uh, try to... Uh, uh, try to attack stuff there. Gotta be real careful with the flying units because of that, as they do have a mind of their own. 
And there we go. Got a little bit away, and then we're gonna move them right back into battle here shortly. See if they can explode some of these archers, and damn, looks like the archers decided to move downwards. Oh well. All good. We don't really want to be fighting the spears down here, so we will have to be careful and then flit away. In the meantime, village is broken through the gate, and so far as the gate was, you know, breakthroughable, as it no longer existed due to spell work. And he's gonna start the battle, get a spell off as well, probably not doing a crazy amount of damage, but uh, we'll follow that up with some Searing Doom shortly. In addition to that, the rest of our forces are getting in here. Man, it looks so weird that the uh, Undivided Chaos Sorcerer is glowing a completely different color than the rest of our units. That's gonna change. We're obviously gonna evolve him to a Zinchin Sorcerer. And there we go, our Chaos Warriors have arrived. Uh, let's watch them break through the gate, but let's also cast the Searing Doom Overcast, I believe, down onto the enemy here. All right, that looked pretty destructive to me. The into the enemy army is pretty bloody here, and as long as they stay balled up or like that, trying to hold the gate, they're going to take a lot of spell damage. Another pink fire of Zinch gonna come down and through the enemy here as well. Over on the side, we've used our second use of that uh, uh, gate breaking ability or wall breaking ability to stream more units in. Our pink horrors are moving in to bring up the rear and then Marauders of Zinch, Forsaken as well as Spawn are going to establish a second beachhead through here. Poor Bastion. Alrighty, Forsaken versus Peasant Spearman. I don't imagine that that's a very good matchup for those spears. They're bringing in some Jade Warriors to reinforce, though, which is a much better matchup due to their uh, pretty damn heavy armor. And they should be on par with Chosen, shouldn't they? Wait, uh, Jade Warriors, okay, this is their armor reduced, though. What's their unreduced armor? Uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, 80 armor on the base Jade Warriors, so we got, what, 100 on the Chaos Warriors of Zinch? Yeah, a little bit less. A little bit less. Alrighty. Well, I don't imagine that the Jade Warriors are going to stand too long against the uh, regular Chaos Warriors here. Especially with our Lord and Hero to lead them. But they are certainly holding the line, but it does allow us to establish that second beachhead. And once again, every few uh, every few seconds just cast something into the middle of this blob. As long as the enemy doesn't have a lot of archers, or range rather, in general, or a lot of uh, casters, we're not really worried about doing this. Might as well Death Star. And another use of that Searing Doom, bringing a lot of units down and ripping them apart in many cases. Oh, I missed blood. Alrighty, very nice. I love that staff effect. Alrighty, let's check back what's going on over here. More of our Marauders are streaming through the gate. We're all, I've also decided to get two extra units of Marauders. Rather than try to uh, go through this location, which is already pretty darn blocked up, uh, to send them up the walls to try to hit the enemy on the flanks. Obviously, a little bit of an extra morale shock from that. We've also moved in our uh, Chaos Warhounds, who are chasing around some Peasant Archers. Obviously, the Warhounds are a little bit fragile, so they've dropped in terms of HP a bit. Uh, but it uh, looks like they're fine chasing now. And it looks like we are certainly depleting the numbers of enemies here through the front gate where Village is casting. And now our Doom Knights are going to help out with this side. There we go. I had to move the uh, Chaos Spawn away a little bit and out of the fray as they started to take damage and had dropped three. They're down to half HP after all. Just gonna let the Marauders soak the damage a little bit and move a few more units in, like these Marauders, and then we'll send the Spawn back in to fight. And then we can see the shadows of the Doom Knights as they fly overhead, getting ready to drop down on something, also getting in a little bit of support from those Pink Horrors, arcing their fires overhead. And one of our Doom Knights is stuck here, a very bloody Doom Knight. A nice poke. Well, let's join that with some more pokes, shall we? There we go, the Deadly Pokes of Doom.
And another Searing Doom coming down, so it's not just Pokes of Doom, there's Searing Doom as well. The enemy army is pretty darn heavily damaged. We've lost about 150 troops, actually a little bit less, and they've lost about half of theirs, near 750. This beachhead looks like it's just about to one. Uh, the spawn of Zincher also back in and now dishing out that splash damage, and I... Wait, do these guys have armor piercing? They're monstrous entry. No, they don't, but they do have armor sundering, so uh, that kind of helps as well. Helps everybody, really. And here come the Chaos Warriors, now able to stream in that the enemy does not have too many units left here. Chaos uh, Sorcerer helping them out. Um, but I do believe the battle is just about over. Ooh, love that eye glow on you, though. And here come the Doom Knights as well as Village to move back in, and I do believe the first of the Bastion Gates shall fall. Lovely. Well done, everybody. Obviously, we don't have to chase anybody off. It is a close victory because we, I guess, took some damage, but I don't think it was any kind of damage worth, uh, worth considering, especially as most of our units are very much replaceable other than the Doom Knights and the, uh, and the Chaos Warriors, which will become replaceable fairly shortly, so not really a concern. Uh, let's see what the actual damage to our army was. All right, nice little breakthrough. That ability to just destroy walls and gates instantly like the ogres do certainly makes breaking through these bastions trivial. Who needs a teleport when your magics can just bring the walls down and you can go through them? Uh, 272 souls as well. So yeah, we get quite a bit of these and the money rewards aren't bad either. Uh, let's occupy the place. Okay, looks like we can't give it to our allies. Now I do wonder Hmm. You know what? We have to figure it out. I, we need to know whether this can go for... Yes, it can. Okay, look. Foster cults, which was which means corruption in adjacent provinces, so nearby would be good. Now, here's a question. We do have... Oh, that's nice. I was wondering whether we would actually have uh, units that could guard the Bastion, as in... Uh, I believe when trying to take Bastion with... I don't remember which faction it was. It might have been Kislev. It... Uh, it basically gave you nothing, as in you couldn't actually put two units in it, although maybe that's now been changed for all factions, I don't know, but clearly this can defend itself, which is quite lovely. So yeah, why not? Just take the entire Bastion ourselves, and we'll wall the north off from Katha instead of the other way around. Now, another thing I wanted to see, on well, the collect income doesn't really matter because it doesn't give us growth, is this. Insights of the Void, ooh, foster cults to corrupt or... Hmm. Plus 20% chance for punishment for Marauders of Tzinch. Attrition while under siege, melee defense armies in province campaign, movement range for enemy armies. Well, that's probably not very relevant. But this gives us a research rate. So basically, having these three gates will give us a free 30% research rate immediately. Which I guess uh, sounds pretty good to me. Uh, also... Okay, no more gifts, unfortunately. Ah, but we do get another doggo. Uh, yes, I do want the other doggo, but I feel like maybe we should wait until next turn so that we don't, uh, don't get screwed over with money. Also, oh, wow. The... Is this a lack of corruption? No, provincial instability. But we'll take over the entire province after taking Dragon's Crossroad. Hopefully we can hit it in one turn. We'll see. Hmm. All right, we've also got level ups, so double down on Pink Fire of Zinch, and there we go. Suddenly, you're about to be a lot more powerful against those blobs of units. Now that we've got that, we have this main line at level 12, which will make our Forsaken and Spawn incredibly cheap. So let's say 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And is there anything up? Oh, Hearts of Iron. You know what? Let's get Hearts of Iron. Vigor loss reduction minus 15 isn't too bad. Though Dominating Presence... Does have its charms as well, the leadership effect. You know, they, they should have doubled down on some of these, i.e. Dominating Presence X2, because, well, there are two units in one, I guess, in some ways. Uh, anyway. What do you have? Nope, Searing Doom. 
Nothing but searing doom. Then we'll get metal shifting after that. Alrighty, well, I believe that's it for what we want to do this turn, other than potentially summon a unit of uh, doggos. I do want to leave room for another pink core and then some screamers of Zinch after, and then probably more... Uh... Oh, wait, well, the spawn will... We'll use... Yeah, I forgot what it's called. We'll use Spawnify in this army. Afterwards, of course. It's only 250 souls, and once they are at 50% cost, that'll be really worthwhile. Alright, let's end a turn. Wanna at least take Dragon's Crossroads before we call this first episode. I really wasn't expecting to just go through the gate, uh... Cafe and gates so fast, and ooh, hello! Is that a? F this is, this looks like it's going to be another cinematic battle because they've got an actual army in here. Sounds good to me. And we got our first technology researched. Lovely. Uh, so what we want to do with regards to this? Wait, Zinch corruption plus two from chaos altars. Zinch corruption plus two from active gifts. Physical resistance for all active gifts of Zinch. Path to glory minus twenty five percent souls cost to devote to Zinch. Ooh. So that's the reduction of this guy. This guy's devotion. He must reach rank 5, so we're not there yet. So here's what I'm thinking. A, we want the Scrutiny of the Gods to upgrade Marauders into Forsaken ASAP. So we do want the XP on them. More importantly, we want this. We actually want the Forsaken upgrade as fast as possible. Although I think we'll probably try to switch to the Temple of Zinch and get that devotion going and before that as well. Also... If we have to unlock stuff, we have to figure out where exactly Chaos Spawn get unlocked. Actually, no, we don't. We don't because we can spawnify, so we don't actually need to construct them. Insofar as it can be called construction. Anyway, Chaos Warhounds in here, and then get that third unit of Pink Horrors. Now, do we switch to Mantas? Let's say we get two Screamers in here, and then we need room for three Spawn. Which would mean we'll have to get rid of one unit. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, that means we no longer need pink cores. I'm a little bit wary of switching off of this and into the mantas immediately, or the screamers, rather. You know what? Let's attack you first. Let's get one more nice cinematic battle and compare it and contrast it to the attack on the gate here. We're going to do this cinematically in a second. I just want to double check that I haven't forgotten anything. For example, as I said, we probably want to get Chaos Sorcerers on the field as fast as possible, and maybe an Exalted Hero in the army. We probably need a building to do this, don't we? Fighters Lodges, the Exalted Hero. Okay, so at level 2, we'll be able to get the Chaos Shrine. I want that Chaos Sorcerer. Start stealing tech. Here's what I'm thinking. We'll get 30% research rate from the gates, presuming we can take all the gates and hold them. Then, I saw a gift... Uh, I don't know if it was in here or in the other one. Ah, here it is. Min a minus 10 control, but trading for 35% research rate. So together with the gates, that's 65% research, plus stealing tech, will basically double our research really early in the game. Which feels very Zinchian, but it also is needed if we want to unlock a bunch of units. Plus we want to get to Storm of Fire as soon as possible as well. Yeah, alright, well, we have a plan. Let's do one more battle, destroy these guys, go. Man, the Iglo makes it look like he's wearing a very big goggles, very big glowy goggles. Uh, ooh, I like that staff, though. Ah, oh, I miss the Warriors of Chaos in general. I gotta love the aesthetics. Anyway, here we go, and now this cinematic battle should be on a pretty good battle in terms of actually making use of a lot more of our troops. The Pink Horrors haven't had a chance to shine, but here there's a lot of essentially un... 
uh, an obstructed view for uh, for them to actually, you know, throw their fires. Plus, the enemy towers have been built fairly close, which will allow us to hopefully bring them down with the horrors. Otherwise, in terms of setup, we have our Forsaken over on the side to hopefully hit the enemy in the back through here, plus our two sets of Warhounds to capture points and then to annoy the archers in the back due to their speed. Otherwise, we're also going to separate Village and our uh, Sorcerer. Each one is going to lead a separate little mini warband, sub warband, or whatever you want to call it as we move in. The Chaos Warriors are going to lead the charge with their barriers, shields, and heavy armor and uh, hopefully prevent too many marauders from dying. You gotta love that effect with the uh, with arrows dropping down on uh, on the barriers. Although you guys are still left a little bit bloody from that. Huh, why is their barrier down already? No, it's not. Huh, you wouldn't think that they'd start bleeding immediately before the barrier is down. Ah, and there we go, Pink Horror is gonna take some shots and actually shoot back, but it looks like the enemy's going after the Pink Horrors rather than the, uh, uh, than the Chaos Warriors now, which is probably a smart move, because obviously they're gonna be able to do a lot more range damage to, uh, Cho- or not Chosen, to Pink Horrors uh, than they are to Chaos Warriors with all that armor. These are only Peasant Archers after all, not even Jade Crossbowmen. Alrighty, and now they're going to get attacked, and will we be able to engage the archers? Well, it looks like we'll be able to hit them in the back, and there's like a little mini route here. And then we're gonna drop down a Searing Doom as they run. Ah, they got re-engaged, beautiful. A very nice Searing Doom exploding half those units. Oh, that was bloody. Uh, and there we go. Now, this is probably the more dangerous portion of the battlefield for us. The enemy has one, two, three, four archer units, five if this one hadn't died, concentrated around this choke point. So these guys are definitely in danger of taking damage. We will have to try to be careful to send the rest of our units to deal with those archers. Over on this side, however, we very much have the advantage and have uh, broken through. The peasant long spearmen uh, have died. Both of the towers are nearly destroyed by virtue of our pink horse who have now switched to Peasant Archers, plus we now have Village using his uh, much more powerful uh, Pink Fires to obliterate enemy units. That Peasant Archer unit is nearly gone. We've also dropped our Doom Knights of Zinch. I did want to perhaps try to kill that Lord Magistrate if... Uh, uh, if we were able to surround him, but unfortunately they did react with Peasant Long Spears. On the bright side though, we have our Forsaken which we're moving around the back, so either they will hit and occupy those Long Spears, or they will kill the Lord Magistrate themselves. And actually, they're just gonna run past him, but, uh, well, if the Doom Knights can take care of him, uh, that works for me as well. It's not like these units are gonna be getting past uh, those Forsaken. And there we go. And they can certainly kill those archers with great ease. Alright, come on, rip some archers apart, don't just stand there. Well, the Doom Knights refuse to stand there, jumping right back into the middle of the fray. I don't, I don't think I actually necessarily wanted this so much as the, uh, as the flying units have a habit. Oh wow, and they're absolutely ripping these guys apart. They probably do have a little bit of splash damage on those lances, uh, though I. Uh, Although I'm not 100% on that one. Anyway, Village has just about broken through here with only one unit of Jade Warriors remaining. He still has a nice little circle around him as well, or them. Uh, we've also managed to go past the choke point here, though it did take our spawn of Zinj, taking quite a bit of damage from concentrated range fire. As I've made comments in previous episodes, or, well, actually previous campaigns, not previous episodes of this, uh, the, uh, the AI is pretty good at targeting larger and single target uh, entity units. Uh, with their range. So you do have to be careful with things like uh, spawn and trolls and, and, and beasts of Nurgle. Cough, cough. Uh, <laughs> uh, in my Kugath campaign, those poor beasts of Nurgle are just constantly getting targeted by all the enemy range units. And I definitely have taken that to heart. I'm going to be trying to be a little bit more careful with those spawn so that they don't get killed. On the bright side, we do have quite a lot of answers to enemy range. In particular, right now, we have those Chaos Warhounds, and later on, we will have those Screamers of Zinch to join in with our uh, Doom Knights. 
Now those range units are no longer going to be able to do anything, so our spawn will be free to move back into the fray, especially once their barrier is fully up, which it is. Beautiful. And our Pencoras are going to move up as well. All right, well, those spears are going to try to hold off our uh, Chaos Warrior units since we have a Chaos Warrior unit at both edges of the map, uh, as in uh, with both little mini warbands, we are not super concerned. As we do still have somebody to lead the charge. Uh, the Chaos or the Doom Knights are still trying to go after the Magistrate, but because this one was still engaged with the peasants, they, uh, they just continually try to... Oh, another one. Or is that the same one? Oh, he was dragging around. <laughs> It was dragging around that peasant. Now they can go after the Lord Magistrate. There we go. They should be able to bring him down with decent ease, I would think. Especially... Well, his melee defense is actually fairly decent, but his armor is quite low at only 20. Otherwise, we've broken through here completely. The minor supply location has been captured by the Forsaken, and the rest of our units are going to move in. Our Warhounds, together with our Chaos uh, Sorcerer, are chasing down those last remaining archers, and the battle should be just about over. Rip them apart, Warhounds. I bet we can't evolve them into Zinchins in some way. And I always forget how large the Warhounds actually are. I mean, uh, these are regular sized people after all. These are big doggos. It's just that they're small compared to everything else because of the relative scale of Warhammer. And there we go. Just like that, uh, the battle ends. This place was looking pretty chaotic with that, uh, with these apparently chaos ruins and... Uh, uh, and all this chaos teeth stuff coming out of the land, so Cathians really shouldn't have been trying to hold on to this location north of the Bastion. Anyway, a close victory apparently, and we certainly took a little bit of damage this time around, especially as we tried to move through this choke point uh, to those ranged units, but I do imagine we should be able to heal up just fine. Well done, everybody. Alright, there we go. Just by the amount of souls, it does look like just getting a single battle going for a settlement with a, well, I guess with part of a stack in there, gives us enough souls essentially to get a different, uh, uh, a different thing. Now, Dragon's Crossroad. Are we supposed to give this to our vassal? Or should we occupy it considering it's our nearby province? Hmm... Plunder the settlement and claim its riches for yourself and can gift it to the vessel. This will give us more money. But this is also part of our starting province, is it not? I suppose what we could do is if we don't like it, we could always give it back to the vassal afterwards, right? Yeah, you know what? Let's occupy the place for ourselves. And then this makes this entire territory ours. And oh, okay. So this does not allow us to upgrade it any further. Warband upgrades cost reduction in this region. Winds of magic charge and magic item drop chance. All armies in adjacent regions. And souls gained from battles. You know what? That's actually pretty interesting. Uh, perhaps we'll leave this as it is then. We'll build this here. Well, not this. Uh, we'll build the souls gained from adjacent thing here. Then, after we're done fighting in adjacent regions, which will be all the gates plus this next uh, Dark Fortress, we'll simply gift this to our vassal. I assume that we can, in fact, actually do that. Plus, we have a... Ooh. Where is it? I saw, yes, construction cost reduction for all buildings. Exploit vassals. Uh, <laughs> working on it. Uh, yeah, Chaos Fort is what we want to build next. It's cost us a decent amount of cash, so we will try to upgrade that with the uh, cost the reduction. Hmm. Also got to be careful about the losing the gates as soon as we take them. I imagine these guys will declare war on us soon. We could build the Lord there, but the cost is a little bit high. 
evil eyeball. Uh, yeah, okay, we'll figure that out later. As I said, this is probably the best time to end this first episode on. Next time we will continue going after these Imperial Wardens and taking gates, as well as we'll have to figure out whether we want to immediately move south of the gate or attack these guys here. I probably do want to get at least another Dark uh, Bastion, as it does seem like every single one can generate quite a lot of cash with these treasure houses. So, yeah, it would be a bad idea to miss out on these opportunities. I guess we don't really care about this uh, Kazag faction, though I suppose if Miao Ying comes up here, we'll have to go south of the gates anyway, so it depends on whether the Cathayans react to what we're doing here as to whether we can go up here. Also, you guys let me know what you think about uh, how to proceed next as well. Anyway, stay tuned for more Village and lots more Zinch. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching. I'm so glad we have blood. <laughs>